Hello, friends. Welcome once again to Integrated Lectures. Today, we will be watching a case which is so subtle that you will be need to be on a high alert in receiving the case. So today's speaker is Dr. Nirupama Agarwal. Welcome, Nirupama. Thank you, Kushala. I'll share my PPT. So, this patient is uh, 36 uh, years old, female patient. She is IT professional. She had come with a lot of itching, lot of itching all over the body. So, she is diagnosed with atopic dermatitis last three months. And especially there was eruptions on exposed parts, both the extremities. A lot of itching with excessive scratching and pigmentation and itching goes up at night. So uh, all the important data is highlighted like extremities, which has very important location. Then aggravation at night. Itching is very, very severe. And patient said, I'm creating my own wounds because of scratching. Wounds rip me apart. Old wounds are also very itchy. So see the words what she's using. So how Excuse is your me, nature? Rupama. Can you hmm? speak a little loudly? Take a second. So uh, how is your nature? Is it okay? Yes. Yes. So she said, I have OCD for cleanliness. I keep cleaning. I keep yelling and cleaning. I don't like things lying here and there. I keep things right in order. Why so? My touch has to be there. See how is she talking? My touch has to be there. Things should be in a certain place. That is more efficient life. Searching for things, not a good space to be in. And I am highly anxious person. Very intuitive and extremely ambitious. Hmm? This is how is the flow. Very ambitious. Nothing can stop me. See how she is talking. Nothing can stop me. People feel I am over career oriented. I spend more time in work. Workspace larger than life. See ours is a night industry. We have to work at night. And mine always finds an efficient way to spend time. I keep planning. Planning is most essential part of life. I try to plan my day efficient way. Ours is a no nocturnal industry. We deal with US clients. because So we have to work at night. It's very common in our industry. But back home, it creates a lot of pressure. People are not prepared for it. He failed, he is pa her partner, husband. He failed, he has to do everything at home. He felt like a domesticated husband. Too much pressure around. I too have multiple facets which I can manage well. I was seeing a lot of couples, very happy couples around. But we were going through a lot of difficulties, a lot of arguments, fights. I started feeling restricted. I started feeling compressed. Too much suffocation. There was always been aura, aura of tension around us. Unsaid silence, unspoken words sta started floating around me. I was there, but I was not there. My presence was not important. We were not talking to each other. It's too much of pressure. I was feeling suffocating. It was too much. Too much pressure. I asked for the divorce. I am happy after that. See, the way she is taking stand and she is okay with her uh, decision. How was your childhood? Oh, it was a happy childhood. My mother was the only working lady that time. But I used to miss her. She used to be at work. She never had time to come to my school. I always felt left out. It's not fair. Always felt what is so important than me. 
I'm your own child. But I have to console myself. I have to go ahead in life. But there was always been big void in life. While growing up, she was not there. I felt left out. Nobody was there to talk to me in my adolescent day. It is. Otherwise, they were the great parents. Nothing to complain about. But largely unavailable. Grown up alone emotionally. I was my own parent. I was handling my own difficulties. I'm highly spiritual. Lot of strength in praying. I love temples. Love spaces where there, there, where no one judges you. What attracts you in temples? The glamour and grandeur of temples attracts me. The art, culture, the spirituality, all together in the temple. I just love it. I love Indian mythology. I am very creative. I like drawings. I like watercolors. I like drawing without boundaries. I am highly intuitive. I can feel the problems. I feel the pain of people around me. I even can feel the pain of animals. I have big fear of water. Large water bodies. Ocean. I feel as if ocean will gulp me down. It will pull me inside. Something which is not in my control gives rise to a lot of anxiety. Depth of water, which I cannot judge, gives me anxiety. It creates a lot of coldness in my extremities, causes a lot of acidity. I feel extremely chilly at that time. I like smaller spaces, compact places. I don't like large open spaces. I don't like oceans. I get dreams. Someone is talking me. In dream, I feel paralyzed. I feel frozen. I cannot do anything. Someone is talking me and I'm not able to do anything. I'm very chilly. My appetite is normal. Thirst is usually less. Thirst usually less is also very important. And what was my observation during case? She carried herself. Miss her language was very good. Her dresses were very beautiful. She was carrying herself elegantly. Long, big stories, but you get attracted into it. Very sophisticated language. Eloquent in her speech. Shows her apt for... Language was so good. So it was showing she has apt for languages. So, uh, Shobha... Uh, if you can tell me what you felt about the case, how you will process the case, it's very important to understand this case in that way. Yes, Nirubama. Uh, see, if I try to share what is my approach towards this case, you know, then uh, what I understood is, like, you know, the first thing which strike to me in this case is the language that this patient is using the vocabulary and the way she is describing, the way you explained the case, the words and, you know, the uh, small sentences that, that she is describing, what she is using when for her itching that she is getting a severe itching, she is saying, I am creating my own wounds and the wounds ripped me apart. Like, you know, it is not a good space to be in or workspace is larger than life, or nocturnal industry, domesticated husband, unspoken words are floating around. So, like, you know, I found that this is not a simple language or a regular meaning the language of a simple person, you know, feeling some complexity here, like, you know, in this, in this person. And then to further go ahead in the case, like, I felt that uh, if I want to understand this patient and prescribe her, then the remedy that I want to prescribe her must include certain features, you know, especially what she's talking about, the sensation of being restricted, being compressed, being suffocated, that we are getting very characteristically. So whatever remedy we are choosing must have this type of thing. At the same time, with this suffocation and the compressed feeling, she has a desire to move out of the situation. She's working in, and she's a person who is very much work oriented. 
and uh, uh, she has the shades which we are seeing which is of comparing herself with the others like you know with the other couples that she's comparing herself and she's feeling like being left out but at the same time she's still taking charge of her own self so there is some definite strength which is seen in herself that she's able to take care of herself also i feel that this remedy must be like you know spiritual or you know who is loving the mythology or who has intuitions within her own self and she has like you know quite attractions towards the glamour grandeur or art culture creativity this type of things also she likes painting without boundaries this also striked me quite a lot you know painting without boundaries meaning i felt ki uh, what what will not have the boundaries like you know in the nature if you see then the maybe the uh, landscapes or the scene sceneries or mountains ocean sky you, you feel that you know these are the things which do not have boundaries and they are something which is very much nearer to the nature so maybe to understand that maybe this person is somebody who who loves the nature you know because she also likes gardening the way you said and she definitely has some connection with the water so this remedy also must have some connection with the water like because the way she is talking about the fear of large water bodies ocean and she likes water colors then uh, also there is a locality in this patient and her language is very attractive high and sophisticated she also has the features of ocd which is seen in her mania for cleanliness and the remedy should be chilly so to conclude what i felt that when i am seeing that person with complexity who has the issues of me versus you and comparison with other like with other couples or mother then this has to be like i feel this this features are telling us to be that this this is through and through maybe animal remedy and in animal also which animal so then i was thinking that the animal which has this type of things like you know spirituality mythology intuitions attraction for glamour grandeur art creativity locality who has elegant presentations uh, sophisticated language uh jealousy ocd all this is taking me somewhere nearer to the snake remedies from her you know creativity and thought about ki maybe is she coming to plant remedy but then when i'm seeing her me versus you uh, things you know especially when she's talking about she has the issues of being compressed being restricted by husband by mother in law and that is why she thought about taking giving him divorce so uh, when i'm seeing everything in things so then i'm coming more to maybe that it is a snake remedy but i am not able to still correlate few other features which are there in the patient and which snake remedy it can come to so uh, nirupama you only will have to guide us yes <clears throat> so uh, as you rightly said animal remedy which was very clear uh, and then i was thinking where is the so much restriction constriction and then the feeling of suffocation i am feeling constricted and then there is a suffocation large spaces there is a anxiety which is not in my control so these two things are very important i i consider sub class 3 where there is lot of constriction and suffocation there is a connection with space also connection with water where there is lot of fear of water water will gulp me down water will pull me inside so there is a definite threat from water which sub class 3 has so the equivalent of sub class 3 in animal is the column tree and then extremely strong lady who whose focus is on business going out and she for her she what she said 
it's too much for me. Let me go out of the relationship and then I'm okay with that. Hmm? So, person who can take decision of life, who goes ahead in the difficulties, like even neglected childhood. But what she said, I became my own parent. Hmm? That is how uh, I came to subclass 3 adult stage of development with that lot of neglected, four second left, left out feeling. With that, I came to reptiles. Hmm? Then in reptile, what is the possible snake? We have boidae, we have elapidae, we have crotalini. But what she said, I felt hurt. In every relationship, she feels hurt. And then she is saying unsaid silence, unspoken words floating around me. So th there is no capability to talk, to make an effective communication with people around you. With that, I considered elapidae and then... She, she was stuck at adolescent age where she said, what she said, there was no one when I was growing up, no one to communicate with. Hmm? And then when you see the elegant presentation, very high sophisticated language, the act for creativity, liking for mythology, with that I selected elapse. And elapse 200 was given weekly for few months. Uh, in that she was very irregular. She took first dose and she was much better. She came after a month after that when there was again little itchy. That is how four to five doses were given and everything settled down. So uh, elapse that way if you see is a remedy where we don't know much about that. There are a lot of rubrics but understanding wise, we do not know much. So if Dr. Anit, uh, uh, Anita, if you can help us with the understanding of mind rubrics. Yes, yeah, sure, Nirupama. See, where Materia Medica doesn't give a clear understanding and you are going from a particular group, then within the group, how to differentiate? So rubrics definitely help us to differentiate all the remedies. So... Uh, Nirubama, can you please share my PPT? Yes, yes, yes. I have tried to group the rubrics so that we can understand the remedy and it try to evolve a picture. Yes. See, so starting from elements strong, elapse as elements from contradiction which in complete repertory is given as contradiction elements from aggravates, shudders, blood boils with prickling. So, so much of effect is there on the body of contradiction that their blood boils and they feel prickling. Prickling is like tingling sensation. So, it is directly going to the nerves, but she is not able to express it out. That is why the elements come up. Then there is elements from abused me in childhood, sexual abuse and especially by father. So this is one of the few remedies which has abused by father. So musculine, basically abused by musculine. And we will see further there is uh, also elements from raped me. Then elements from grief, death of loved ones, especially losing child. Then elements from anger, anguish and anticipation. Then we see like, you know, other uh, snake remedies don't have this much of love for nature. But the sensitivity of elapse is so refined that they have nature love, gardening love for playing, desire to play in grass. Now, Kushala is going to share the source. So in that, this Elapse is a snake which lives in grass. So from that we see this playful desire to play in grass, traveling desire for and they have this countryside desire for. So they don't like cities and towns. They want countryside where there is a lot of greenery. There is nature. And there is simplicity also. Next. Then we see this, this snake. As against lachesis, which is very extrovert and communicative and very, you know, uh, uh, polished, uh, very uh, outgoing type of person like we shared in last session. 
Now, this snake is very shy and secluded. They live alone. So, a lot of rubrics of seclusion are there. Where there is company aversion to, they cannot bear anybody. Then company aversion to, wants to get into the country away from people. Company aversion to, avoids the sight of people. So, from simple timidity and timidity bashful, there is so much of company aversion and social aversion to society. They also have conversation aversion too. Because this snake is a very reserved snake, an introverted snake. Desires full of, desires to be in a cavern. Like in our patient also, she, she doesn't like big space. She wants small room. So they also desire to be in a cavern. Cavern is a cave, like uh, you see in the picture. Home, leave home desire to when retiring. Because basically they are very uncomfortable at home also. Because there is a lot of interaction at home. There is a lot of emotional, you know, dialogue in the home. So they just want to escape from that. Hiding himself corner in. Homesickness. Along with that home aversion, they also have homesickness because they want to be in their comfort zone and they don't want to step out of it. Timidity. Timidity bashful. Next. Now we see the disposition of the snake. They are haughty. Like basically with this refined sensitivity, they also have this haughtiness like platina. But in other things, it doesn't match up with platina. So censorious about self. They have a lot of anger about themselves, which uh, with that they does not, do not wish to be spoken to. Because anybody speaking to them is also taken as assault or injury. So they don't like to be spoken to. Injustice cannot support. Strike desire to. Fight wants to. So these are some snake qualities. Sadness reign in is very specific to elapse. Sitting inclination to wrapped in sad thoughts. Again, watchfulness is also a quality of snake. Wants to do work alone. So they want to be quiet and to work alone. So basically they are doing work which needs, you know, uh, isolated working. They don't like to work in a team. But along with that, they also have held desire to be which ameliorates. Because of their timidity and because of their insecurity, they also want to be held. Then because of their sensitivity, horrible sad stories also affect them. There is a lot of brooding, dwells on past events. This will be reflected in uh, uh, like wounds she was, you know, talking about ripping apart and all that. So that can be connected here and also see uh, some dreams where they dig the dead, uh, wounds of dead bodies. Locacious and quarrelsome. Now, there are a lot of fears also because it is a timid snake and it is not a very bold and extrovert snake like uh, Crotalus or Lachesis. So, fear of being alone, menses during, fear of animals, fear of apoplexy, fear of impending disease. Complete has also given fear of tuberculosis. Fear something terrible is going to happen. So, there is a lot of anticipation and there is a lot of foreboding that something bad is going to happen. Which keeps them, you know, anxious. And then there is tremulous fear. Fear of robbers, snakes and also rain. So this water connection comes here also. Because they have fear of uh, rains. And generally, you know, snakes, uh, during rains, their holes or their houses are, you know, flooded with water. So they have to escape from there. So that is one of the reasons that they have this fear of rain. Then there are a lot of delusions. Beaten that he is. Falling he is. Injured of being. Like Lachesis and Naja. Neglected he or she is. Rejected and ostracized she is. Then there is one specific delusion where rowdies and brawlers will break in and sh when she is alone. So this is, you know, fear of uh, rowdies. Rowdies and brawlers are, you know, people who fight noisily. They make a lot of noise. So being a timid snake, they have this fear of noise and fear of sudden, you know, 
sudden stress coming up so that type of thing that fear is also there then they have this specific type of aphasia where they understand speech uh, sorry they cannot understand speech but they can speak so there is aphasia they can't comprehend but they can speak so this speaking is you know one sided it is not communication it is more of whatever they want to speak they speak it is more of loquacity and not communicativeness and aphasia apoplexy after so again here also you get that there is you know no connection they just want to speak what they feel like next then they have this lot of you know biting rubrics where there is biting of fingers sleep during biting of hands sleep during and biting himself i think there is one biting arm also so they are you know tr somewhere uh, trying to uh, bite themselves so it is more of you know masochistic tendency like in this case also she was saying that uh, she causes wounds while scratching you know then there are a lot of dreams because of the active subconscious mind lot of repression and suppression being timid so you see lot of dreams of dead bodies embracing dead bodies so i try to understand it in this way that whatever dead issues are there in past they are trying to embrace those issues and similarly there is also digging knife into wounds of dead bodies so they are also you know trying to keep the wound non healed or wound active so they are trying to keep their past active they have lot of brooding and dwelling on unpleasant things then dead bodies they want to put dead body in shroud that means they want to cover that issue so lot of hiding and secretiveness is also there then fear of dead relatives fear of death of relatives then there is a specific you know rubric of falling into abyss abyss is a bottomless pit where there is no bottom it is not visible then there is fear of uh, there are, there are dreams of journey because they like traveling then there is uh, dreams of remorse dreams vexatious so whatever emotions are not expressed they come in the dreams then there are dreams of war and about weeping also so all the unexpressed emotions then there is dream of high places though they dream of high places they have fear of falling so you can see that you know confidence level is also not that much dreams of walking criss cross criss cross now walking criss cross can be either a person is intoxicated confused or they want to you know evade someone so all these things can three things can be there in elapse then dreams of fighting with galley slaves now galley slaves are the generally you know in past uh uh prisoners used to be used as slaves on the ships galleys are ships so they are fighting with galley slaves now one thing is that they are all criminals but they are slaves that means they are chained so now they have the courage to fight with people who are dangerous but they are chained so it shows their you know anger at the same time of uh, at the same time timidity now kushala will be sharing the doctrine of signature and materia medica of elapse yes kushala yes yeah. yeah. thank you anita yeah friends so let's stand, understand the source and materia medica of elapse what happened Second, it's not moving. You can see, na? No? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the common name is Brazilian coral snake, Elapidae. The prover it was proved by Muir and Lippe, who pressed out the poison from the venom sac of the living reptile. 
and triturated with sugar of milk. It's one of the most colorful of the venomous snake. Coral snake, they are slender and they have bright markings of rings of red, black, yellow, white. And this coloration, this bright coloration also helps them in warning of the predators and also helps them in camouflage. They are mostly ophiophages, that is they feed on other snakes. And they also feed on other cold-blooded animals such as lizards and amphibians, but not so much on birds or frogs or insects. So what is their method of attack and defense? So since they are not a very aggressive snake, they are more timid. So what they do when they are threatened by some predator, they will elevate and curl the tip of their tail and they'll release gas from the cloaca, which makes a sound to frighten the predators away. Or another method of defense is the bright colors, which they use as warning. But when they strike, which is usually only when they are threatened or pushed to a corner, then they will strike very quickly and forcefully. And they have very small fangs, which are fixed to the maxilla. So then they have a firm grip. Once they bite, they hold on to the victim with their small fixed pad and they chew. They chew that bite portion. They just don't leave you. They'll twist the, and turn their neck from side to side and they will disseminate the venom. So it's not multiple bites, but one bite they'll hold on firmly. And it is called a minute snake because that bite is so strong that it can cause death in a minute. Now, what is the behavior of these snakes? The coral snakes are basically very docile, very shy, very elusive. That is, they like to hide. They're very secretive. And they would rather be in burrows rather than being seen. They're not aggressive. Or they're not even, they won't even bite you just like that unless it's accidental that you tripped on them, or you put them in a corner. And they're very tolerant to touch until they are restrained in. They spend a lot of time buried in the ground. They would rather be in their burrows, only coming to the surface during the rains, because during the rains, there will be flooding around. So that's when they would rather come out during the rains. They are solitary creatures and hunt during the day. They will bite you, which is very accidental, either when somebody is hiking and they step over their burrow or gardening, or when you disturb them from their hiding place. Now, what is the pathophysiology of this coral snake? Its venom is neurotoxic and often contains substances that damage the body tissues or the blood cells. The bite is relatively painless, but death occurs from paralysis of the heart and the lungs. Coral snake venoms tend to have significant neurotoxicity, inducing neuromuscular blockage that causes cardiac and respiratory arrest. So we, uh, Dr. Shoba and Dr. Anita, described at length the common features of the snakes, the specific, you know, mind features of elapsed. Dr. Anita just went through through her rubric, she has explained at length. So what are the physical general features of elapse? They have a strong aversion to bananas and oranges. They desire sweetened buttermilk, that's lassi, ice, oranges, whipped cream, and salads. Now, in the physical generals, you have features of wrinkled mucous membrane, it's more of a right-sided paralysis. There is stomach coldness, ice-like. They are better drinking cold water. So there's burning in the esophagus, better cold drinks. The cold drink can be felt actually descending from the esophagus down to the stomach, and it feels ice-like. Even in the chest, you have this coldness internal as if ice water were rising and descending through a cylindrical tube. They can speak but cannot understand speech. This acoustic hallucinations. They have this imaginary singing and whistling sounds which are heard. And this remedy has marked 
black discharges. So these are some of the, you know, uh, physical generals of elapse and the source patho and the uh, source features as well as the pathophysiology of elapse. So friends, in this case, we have traveled from seeing the sensitivity and the complexity of the case, which we have understood through kingdom differentiation, which Dr. Shoba has well explained. We saw the travel of the elapse, which Dr. Anita has explained through the mind rubrics, how elapsed case is so different from the other snake remedies. We have also understood snake, the reptile features in general. And we have understood through Dr. Nirupama how she has come to subclass three and understood the, you know, the restriction, constriction, and the suffocation and the wanting to come out of the water. Okay. So it was a long travel. And through the doctrine of signature, we have understood the source of the pathophysiology. So this travel is sufficient enough to try to understand and study elapse remedy at length. So if any of you would like to add anything, please do add Dr. Nirupama Shobha, Anita, or else we conclude for today. Oscillating, you were saying, no, Nirupama, you were talking something about yeah. oscillations. They, they have a lot of oscillatory complaints. Because their tail keeps oscillating. So in PM wise also, there are two stages, like school age and adolescent. So they oscillate between two stages. That is what PM I have not taken in details purposefully, but I have explained the remedy in details. So it has that two stages, school age okay. and adolescent. They keep moving into these two stages. I think even in all the materia medica sources, oscillatory motions is a part of the physical general. Physical general also. So we yes. find oscill oscillations in dancing, in rhythm, eye, eye movements. One more thing I wanted to focus was it is a chilly snake. So, you know, there is a lot of coldness. So there is no warmth or emotional bonding. At least, you know, in expression, there is no warmth. They are very mm -hmm. sensitive. So they are highly intellectual and creative. But emotionally, they are cold. Focus is also on work. No? They are, it yeah. is a work related snake. Like, no? That is what we found out even in the case and uh, Nirupama's patient. <laughs> Shall we conclude? Ah, Kushal. Yeah. Yes. So we conclude for today. Happy Diwali, friends. Have Thank a you and happy Diwali. Happy Diwali. Yeah. yeah. Happy Diwali to all our viewers. Good day. Meet you again after the Diwali. With newer cases and newer presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.